Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Tech Art for All. Uh, in today's lesson we're going to cover uh, some of the basics of the Maya uh, interface, um, specifically portions that are um, useful for scripting. Uh, we're also going to go over how to use uh, the scripting help and uh, whatever other bits that may uh, arise. So uh, let's get started. Uh, so uh, I'm using Maya 2018 uh, point two, which is currently uh, the latest release. Um, if you're using an uh, older version of Maya, I think a lot of this, if not all of this information is still uh, pertinent. Uh, the interface might have changed a little bit, but I think you can um, find yourself kind of like uh, around uh, Maya and figure out what's the equivalent of what I'm doing in 2018.2. Um, if you've never used Maya before, if this is your first time, uh, I definitely encourage you uh, to spend some time with it to get familiar with the interface and uh, you know kind of how it works. I do expect you to have some kind of understanding of, as to how Maya works before getting started on the scripting and the deeper dive. Um, so uh, initially we're going to start with Mel scripting, uh, even though you can also do Python, um, Python API, uh, PyMel. Uh, you can also do uh, C++ API programming later on, but that's, you know, way advanced. That's later down the road. The reason why I think MEL is a good entry point for um, uh, people who are new to scripting is because uh, most of the things that occur inside of Maya are normally done in MEL, and you can just kind of quickly take bits and pieces from different interfaces and different files and assemble them together, and it's just a really... Uh, uh, really great way to learn. It's, um, you know, MEL is a, uh, stands for Maya Embedded Language, and uh, it's uh, kind of based on the C language. There's a lot of similarities with, with C and uh, also Unix, some Unix commands, because uh, initially uh, Maya was developed, uh, I think, on Unix or Linux, one of those uh, operating systems. Uh, so it's got history there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, MEL is kind of like the first uh, scripting language. It's uh, totally native and fully supported uh, by uh, Autodesk. Um, and then later on, I'll show you how to transition from MEL and start Python scripting. So uh, let's start out by looking at the interface really quick. Um, down here in the command line, this is called the command line, this long thing. On the left side is kind of the input portion where you can input quick commands. Um, you can switch uh, later on to Python by clicking on this. Uh, doesn't normally look like a button, but it's actually a button. So I'm just clicking on it. I'm going to set it back to Mel. Uh, later on, when you start switching to Python, <laughs> you might end up uh, entering a Mel command, and it will give you an error. So be be careful and know what you're entering. You know, if you enter Python inside the Mel uh, uh, text field, you'll get an error, and the other way around. So definitely be careful and. When you get an error, the first thing you should probably check is like, hey, is Mel turned on or Python? The window right next to it is actually an output window. It shows you the last uh, line of uh, text that was returned um, to you. So for example, if I type here, print, uh, hello. You know what? No, I'm not going to do hello world. I'm going to do, I love Maya. You can see that, hey, here's the, you know, there's the result of my command that says, I love Maya. Uh, so I normally don't use this interface. Uh, it's great once in a while if you want to enter something really quickly, but I usually use what's called the um, script editor. And this is what it looks like. Oh, let me show you. You just click this button in the bottom right corner right here. Boop, this comes up. On the top is the output. Uh, on the bottom is the input, but here you can actually have multiple lines. So once again, I can say print, I love Maya, 
hit enter and it's kind of verbose so it tells you tells you what I what my command was and what the output was uh, there is a lot of output here and I think when you first look at it it could certainly be uh, extremely extremely intimidating um, but like I mentioned before I will kind of show you how to pick out the juicy bits that are of interest to you um, if you want less information you can make sure that this echo all commands uh, is turned off uh, you can also uh, clear this uh, the history is called and it will clear the top window and now you're kind of starting fresh so usually if I want to figure out how to do something in Maya I will enable echo all commands because this is kind of like this will show you the most information that that Maya produces uh, you click echo commands and then you clear history to clear out this top, top window and then you do something like create polygon sphere uh, so I just created a sphere but you can see it kind of returned all this text so later on later on I'll show you how to sift through that um, the other thing that's super useful is the scripting help uh, so this is where you'll kind of get uh, the information all the, all the different mail commands uh, mail commands they can come um, from the you know Maya itself the, the base code of Maya it could come from a plugin that's inside of Maya it could come from a melt script it uh, could come uh, from a, later on from a Python script or, or a PyMel uh, script so there's a lot of different places that you know commands come from uh, but I believe that mail only comes from Maya itself the base code uh, the pl a plugin uh, or a mail script. Can't think of any other place, but if I'm wrong, d do tell me. Um, so when you click on help, you have a couple of options. You have uh, under Maya scripting reference, you have mail command reference and Python command reference. I'm going to start out with uh, mail command reference, and unfortunately, it brings up Internet Explorer, which we all know nobody uses. So the first thing I do is I, I select this uh, address, I copy it, and I say goodbye to Internet Explorer. Yes. And then I just bring up the browser of my choice, which happens to be uh, Chrome. And we're going to paste that in here and uh, create a bookmark, which I've already done right here. So if I click on this, it's the same thing. Um, so in this first interface, we have categories of uh, mail commands. So you have general language modeling, blah, and so on, and then you have subcategories. Um, the scripts, the commands are, are categorized quite nicely. So uh, for the most part, and, and the help is updated, but you will run into some situations where things haven't been updated just quite yet, or there's some misinformation. Uh, this is a vast, vast, uh, you know, uh, help kind of setup. So, you know, mistakes are to be ex uh, expected, I guess. So, uh, you may notice that some of these commands have a little M next to them. What that means is that it's actually a mail script. Uh, and all the other commands are either from a plugin or, f or are actual like C++ commands uh, from Maya. So, for example, uh, if I click on this attribute exists, it's a mail command. I can, you know, it's here it says that, oh, it's a mail script. Uh, if I click on something that doesn't have the M, it's a mail command. So script command versus command. Um, so let me click on something. Let's do the add adder command. Uh, oh. One thing I should mention, this is also really great. great. Uh, this is a quick way to find scripts. So for example, if you want to do something with attributes, you just start typing A, T, T, and with each letter, uh, this li list on the left here will um, get more refined. So right now it's showing me everything that has the word ATTR in it. So I'm gonna click on, so that's another, find to, uh, another way to find the script, but of course, there are uh, certain scripts that have names that are kind of like, you have to know what they are or you won't find them. So let's click on add adder. 
uh, up here you have like a little uh, box that has all the flags that you're going to pass to the command. Uh, and the flags are basically the specific thing that you want to do in this command call. So just because I'm running the add adder, I might want to do slightly different things every time I run the add adder command. So at one point, um, I might want to make a multi-attribute, which is an attribute that has multiple attributes. We'll go through that a little bit later. Or maybe I want to make it hidden, but then next time I don't want to make it hidden. So you can customize this command via these flags. Uh, and then here it has a little paragraph kind of describing what the command is and maybe give you some hints. Uh, in this case, it gives you a list of all the attributes that are supported with this command. Then uh, it has return value, which is what the command returns. Uh, keywords that may um, uh, that are associated with this command, and then also other commands that are kind of in the same family as this command, or that are related to the add adder command. And it's cool because you can actually go like, oh, there's a set adder command, sweet. So you can click on it, and it will go you kind of to that command. So I'm going to go back, and then you have a list of all the flags and um, what kind of arguments or what kind of input this particular flag takes in. Um, so the descriptions are actually uh, quite good. Oh, here's also like a quick list of all the uh, flags. And then on the right side is the properties. So these little uh, letters, they mean something. Uh, so the C means that you can do something during the creation. Q means you can query or ask a, uh, what a specific um, flag is set to. Uh, the E means edit, so meaning you can, so the first time you run a command is you're creating, uh, but you can also make modifications to something that's been created, and that's where the edit comes in. So, for example, the short name, I can only use it during the creation, or I can query it, but I can't modify it after it's already been created. Um, what is the M? I guess multi-use, you, you can use in different ways, but I don't run into that much often. Uh, and then here comes the best part. The best part is the examples. All the way at the bottom, usually um, the help for the command will have great examples. And, and um, this is a really great place to kind of start. You know, I've learned a lot from uh, using the examples. And like I said, most of the commands have great examples. You'll sometimes run into commands that don't have great examples, at which point you start experimenting. Um, so the other thing uh, that's pretty useful is that you can um, use the help mail command. There's a help command. So the way it works is uh, I'm just going to type help and uh, I'm going to type a mail command. So for example, the add adder that we just looked at. Uh, so you can see it outputs some stuff down here, but it's kind of hard to read it. So I usually open up the script editor uh, and where is it? Here it is. I'm going to actually, you know what? Let's clear that and run it again. Help add adder. I'm going to select it and uh, to run it, um, you can click this play triangle icon up here, or you can uh, click the really thin enter button next to your num number pad on the right, all the way on the right. You hit enter, and here it is. Here is kind of like the in Maya help for the add adder command, and it's very similar to the help. It tells you what the short name for the flag is, what the long name, and what the input is. So it's definitely limited, more limited information, but it's quite handy when. You kind of remember how to do something, but you might have forgotten a certain detail. Uh, and then if you want to find out where a certain script lives, for example, let's go back to the help. Add, add, uh, let's see this one, add custom preps tab. You can use the what is command. What is add custom Prefs tab. Once again, hit enter, and it says, oh, it's a mail procedure, and it's found right here. And if I select this path, actually, I'm going to select everything but 
the name of the script. Uh, and then I open up the Explorer. Come on. Why isn't, oh, there we go. Why isn't it responding? OK, here we go. Hit Enter. Uh, and this is the location where Add Custom Preps tab is. Let's find it together. Add Custom Preps tab. There it is. And you can open it up in a text editor and have a look inside and see what's going on. Um, so I'm going to end this video at this point, and we'll continue from there during the next video. Thank you very much.